Hey, this is Mr. Aiden. This is AP Calculus AB, and we're going to be doing the 2019 AP Calculus AB exam number four. Number four. And so, this is a practical problem. I love these types of problems. You can see here we have a cylindri cylindrical barrel with a diameter of two feet. You can see that diameter is not changing, is it? And so, that radius or that diameter, the radius of one foot is not going to change. That radius of one foot is going to be a constant. But the height can change. So we can have dh over dt, that height can change because it's going to it's going to contain collected rainwater and the water is drained out of valve out the end or something like that or the bottom of the barrel, okay? And so you can see the rate of change of the height in the barrel with respect to time is modeled by this dh over dt. dh over dt equals negative one tenth the square root of the h, where h is measured in feet, t is measured in seconds, and we know volume equals pi r squared h for a cylinder. So they give us all of that information, and we're going to take all that information and we're going to find some different things. So let's take a look at a. a is asking you find the rate of change of the volume of water with respect to time. So we're trying to find dv over dt. That's what we're trying to find. We're trying to find the rate of the change of the volume. Well, we have an equation for volume. Volume equals pi r squared h, okay? And we have the product rule here. We're gonna take the derivative with respect to time. So first, let's take the derivative of the radius with respect to time. So we have two pi r dr over dt times h because we are doing the radius. Now let's take the derivative of the height with respect to time. So we have pi r squared and what's the derivative of h is 1 times dh over dt. Now can you see how the radius is not changing with respect to time? So this is equal to 0 because the radius is not changing with respect to time. So we have dv over dt and that equals pi times r. What is the radius always going to be? It's going to be 1 foot squared times the change of the dh over dt. Keep in mind they told us what dh over dt was. They said dh over dt equals negative one-tenth square root of h. So the dh over dt is negative one-tenth times the square root of the height. All right, And so you can see how we have pi times one times negative one-tenth times the square root of 4 because they're saying height is equal to 4 feet. We want to know what ha what is happening at this exact single instant in time of 4 feet and that ends up giving you negative pi over 5 and what are the units? Remember it's the change of volume over the change in time so it is feet cubed per second because the change in volume over the change in time. Uh, this was worth uh, one, sorry, two points, two points. Uh, finding the this relationship right here was worth one point, one point. And then your answer with units is worth one point. So two points for problem A. Then we go to a problem here, and we always have to ask ourselves, are we taking the derivative or are we taking the integral? Okay, and it says, when the height of the water is exactly three feet, what's the rate of change? That's saying, what's the derivative of the height of the water? Okay, now we know what the change of the height with respect to time. That equals negative one-tenth square root h, or you could say uh, negative one-tenth h to the one-half power. And so we want to find the derivative of that. We want to find the rate of change. So we're going to take the second derivative. It's d squared h over dt squared. That's the second derivative of this function, or the first derivative of the dh over dt function, or the second derivative overall. And we end up getting negative uh, 1 over 20 root h, okay, when we do the derivative, times dh over dt, because remember, implicitly, we need to take a look at that dh over dt. So what do we have? We have negative 1 over 20 square root of h, and what is dh over dt? Let's come back to the very beginning. dh over dt equals negative 1 tenth the square root of h. So we have negative 1 tenth the square root of h. What cancels out here, obviously, is the square root of h and the square root of h, the negative and the negative, and we're left with a ch rate of change equaling 1 over 200, 1 over 200. Now, do you see how that number is greater than 0, isn't it? It's not a negative number, 
which means that with respect to time, it will be increasing. And so that's the first derivative test. It's going to be increasing, and that is explaining our reasoning. This is going to be worth three points. Three points. First, for finding the derivative right here. Um, second is uh, finding to, to then substitute the dh over dt in there. And lastly, um, to find your answer with a correct explanation. So three points, three points. Uh, one for finding, sorry, that derivative right there, not this derivative, that derivative right there, one point for including the dh over dt, and one point for the answer right there. Three points for letter B. Let's take a look at letter C. Letter C is saying um, you, when the height is equal to 5 feet, use separation of variables. That's saying use the integral, use the integral. So I'm coming back to that original formula, dh over dt equals uh, negative one-tenth the square root of h, or h to the one-half power. And so I'm going to get the h's on one side, so one over root h dh equals negative one-tenth dt. I'm going to clean this up a little bit to call this uh, h to the negative one-half power dh equals negative one-tenth dt. You can see this is prime then ready to integrate, isn't it? And we're going from zero to time t right there, some time t. What's the integral of h to the negative one-half? Well, that h becomes one-half. It goes up to one-half. We're going to do the reciprocal of that, which is two. What's the integral of negative one-tenth dt? Is negative one-tenth t plus c. And we're going from, from zero to time t, right? Zero to time t. Now, you can see, at they said when, when time is equal to zero seconds, we know the height is equal to five feet, which means I know when this is equal to zero, when that's equal to zero, that guy is equal to five feet. This height is equal to five feet, so two root h. So what is c equal to is two root h. So what is my, somewhat of my final formula here is we have two root h is equal to negative one tenth t plus two root five, because that's what c was. We're gonna do a little bit of algebra here to clean it up. So we have negative one twentieth t plus root five, we divide it by two. Then we're gonna square root each side, so h equals, sorry, square each side, uh, one twentieth t plus root five squared, and that is your function for h in terms of t right there. Uh, this bad boy is going to be worth four points. One point for simply separating your variables right there. One point for simply separating your variables because that's what they asked you to do. Uh, one point for taking the antiderivative or the integral of that. Uh, one point for finding the constant of integration right there. And then one point for um, the function at the end. So four point problem. So you can see uh, a was worth two points, and B was worth three points. That's five points total, and then four more points. That's nine points. So make sure you uh, grade yourself. Put your answer in misrating.com. And this was AP Calculus 2019 AB exam number four.